you that we know whose we are this morning and we are yours and we are free in Jesus name and if you believe
pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today is a wonderful day. You may be seated. If this is your first time joining us, we want to say good morning. And it's an honor to have you. And we want to encourage you to grab hold of a connection card. You'll find them located in the seats around you. Please fill one of those out and then drop it in the offering basket as it comes by at the end of service. Uh, we have a couple of quick things that are coming up this month. We have our Relentless Youth Conference, which is next weekend, Friday, Saturday, and then Pastor Jimmy will be here Sunday. And then we have a fall festival happening Wednesday the 31st, so make sure you sign up to volunteer. Make sure you bring candy donations, and we're just going to have an amazing time together. Today is a special day where we get the opportunity to honor our pastors and celebrate them. And we want to thank everybody for being a part of it. Um, it's a special, special day. And if there's something I learned from Pastor since I've been here, he's always, he always says, you can never go wrong with honor. You can never go wrong with honor. So thank you for being a part of this special day. And uh, yes, we're excited. It's going to be a great day. So um, please join us as we watch this video. A special shout out to two of our favorite people, Pastor Russell and Beth Hill. We are so proud of you, and not only are you great pastors, but you are a son and daughter of faith. And we love you so very much. It seems like just yesterday we were celebrating your 25th wedding anniversary in 2016. Now today we're celebrating 19 years of being at the Bethel Family Worship Center. We're so proud of you. It's amazing. celebrate 19 years of pastoral leadership at Bethel Family Worship Center. We just wanted to take a couple moments of reflection and thanks. Yes, Pastor Bev, there's a thought about some things I wanted to specifically share with you. I thought about your transparency, your authenticity, your passion, your love. They're all ways that you show forth as a leader, as a wife, as a mom, as a pastor. You desire for your congregation to be strong. And not only that, but the vision that you have for the women of the congregation, that we're empowered and that you bring us your prayers and your programs and your studies that lead us in that direction. So I thank you for that, and I truly appreciate that. Okay. 
Pastor Russell, from the minister's heart to his pastor's heart, thank you for your covering, not just over Bethel Family Worship Center, but also over each of our marriages and each of our lives and the singles. I thank you that you love us so much that as a shepherd, you're not only concerned about the direction that we go, but you love us so much that you wouldn't even come and smell like us as a sheep. So I just thank you that as, uh, as we love on you, Thank you that you love on us. And so we celebrate this pastor's appreciation. The Bible declares, let they who rule well be worthy of a double portion. And we know that you rule well, that you're a beautiful marriage, you're a beautiful couple, you're beautiful ministry leaders together. Hey pastors, we just want to take this moment to say thank you so much for your labor of love and pouring into us the way that you do. Over three years ago, we stepped foot into Bethel Family Worship Center and we absolutely knew that it was a home for us. So thank you so much for loving us the way that you do and for leading us with the heart of Christ. We love you. God bless. Congratulations, pastors, on your anniversary. i just like to say I love you. I appreciate all that you have done for us here. I am just really proud to be a member of your congregation. And like I said, I love you very much, and I hope that you'll have many, many more anniversaries. I just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to you pastors and everybody on the pastoral staff. You guys are amazing, and I am incredibly blessed to be a part of this family here at Bethel. Next month is my two-year anniversary since the first day that I came. It was just a regular Wednesday night, and as soon as I walked in, I fell out. And I love you so much, and I am so thankful for everything that you have poured into me and into this church, and I thank you just for all that you've done. Hey, pastors. want to say that we love you and we miss you so much and we are just so happy and blessed to have you both in our lives. We miss you guys. We want to be there but we can't and we're just thankful that you guys are doing what God's called you to do. You guys are walking the wall and talking to God. We're really blessed to have you guys in our life. You've been there for us since we were real little. We've been attending Bethel for more years than we can count now. We love you guys so much, and we hope today is great for you. And we don't know what we would do without you. Without you, without you, without you.
Pastor and Pastor Beth, uh, I just want to take this time to tell you thank you for everything that you do for the church and me personally. Um, you've shown great leadership uh, through the past few years that I've been here, and I thank you uh, for the example that you both set, um, whether it be you know in a marriage or just being a man of God and a woman of God. Um, we thank you guys for everything that you do, uh, the way that you serve, the way that you don't put yourself above anyone else, um, and we just love you. Good morning, church. Praise God. We give him all the glory. First and foremost, I want to thank uh, the pastor for uh, every single thing that he's done, and congratulations, uh, Sister Bev, and, and you guys just uh, rock. Uh, I, uh, uh, in my spirit, when I pray for you, I always think of you as a, a, a little kid and over in Ohio, and sitting on the kitchen floor, and, and uh, looking up at your mommy and daddy, and, and just thinking, man, what's going on? the seeds that were being planted on their heart, and in the background, uh, obviously, it was going on with Sister Bev, too, and uh, I could just see you looking up at the kitchen table and thinking, what's going to happen with all this as mom and dad would fellowship and just share uh, bread after uh, church and services on Sundays, and I'm sure Sundays were long for you, but uh, God has showed up in your life, and man, is he showing off. I praise you. I, I am so excited for you and what God's doing in your life. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the, the next 19 years with you. I just uh, have celebrated my sixth year here at the church with you. I want you to know that uh, uh, I, I love you and I call you a true friend. You're my pastor. You're my spiritual leader. You're, you are my rock. And when I grow up, I want to be like you. You're a great, great man of God. And uh, every time that I look at you, I see the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. I thank you for the Dalton family. I thank you for my business. Uh, uh, I thank you for all the things that this church has done for our ministry. And I know that we're hooked up and we are on the narrow path together, Pastor. And I just uh, can't say enough about you and Sister Beth being our leaders. And I, uh, I'm just blessed to call Bethel family my home church. Man, I remember the first sermon I heard you mentioned the other lady at SeaWorld. And um, afterwards, after the words, we met with you. And you mentioned that you was from Ireland. And I knew right then and there that this is where we were supposed to be. And ever since then, we've been here trying to serve faithfully. As Pastor Hill said, let your light shine, not make your light shine. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just been great to be here. It's been
members of that Bible study, empowered me to start, you know, um, a little side hustle and and just go full throttle with it and believe in myself um, and believe in, in the calling that the Lord has placed in, in my family's um, unit. Um, I'm just so grateful for both of you and again, just for believing in us and just being consistently Christ-like inside and outside of church, inside and outside of church hours, and I just love you both so much and appreciate you. Hi, Pastor Bab. I just wanted to say I love you, and I'm going to attempt to sing this right quick, so thank you for being a friend, travel down the road and back again, my heart is true, you're a pal and a confidant, I just want to say we love you as a family and thank you for always being there and encouraging. Thank you for being transparent when you need to be. Thank you for being hard when you need to be. And thank you for just being my mom. I love you and have a great day. Hey, Pastor Bev. Um, I love you because you're just genuine and your just integrity for God is just amazing. And just everything I've learned from you in just the small two years that I've been here is just there's no words to explain it, and I just, from the first time that I met you, just the smile on your face that just brings joy into the room, and there's just such a great honor to know you, and just to be close with you, and just to learn from you, and just, I can't wait to be able to be here, and just have my kids one day learn from you, and I just love you so much. Pastor Ben, I just wanted to let you know how much To me, one of the most touching moments I had or experiences I've had with you, which I was saying to you directly. But you know, a lot of times when people lose family members within the church, oh shoot, hold up, man, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, you know, you get a, a notice, an email, and then you can see across that person. Well, um, I didn't speak on it. I brought my guy up here several times in a wheelchair. And uh, there's a big, big guy with story behind it. Yeah, we appreciate 
appreciate it. It's coming right back to me. And I know you experienced a lot of that years ago, too. And I uh, just want to say it again. I love you. Hi, Pastor Beverly. I love you because you're such an amazing woman. And you are everything to me. Ever since I started coming here, you have just been so awesome to me. I love your smile, your presence. Every time I'm around you, I just want to hug you. I love your perfume. It smells so amazing.
verse 16 and 24. Pleasant words are honeycomb. Pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. I can't think of nothing, but God certainly has handpicked you, Pastor Bear, to be the first lady here at Bethel Family Worship Center. Many are called, but few are chosen. I thank you for being my friend, and you are so important and valued to the body of Christ. I admire how strong you are with the faith that is unwavering, even in the midst of standing on shaky, shaky ground. Your ability to make ordinary beautiful is amazing. You are a great wife to your husband and an example to other women that they too can become a great wife to their husband and become that one. I have a poem for you, honoring our First Lady. First Lady, you have stood faithfully along the side of the man of God with love, with support, encouragement, and faith, setting an example of true commitment to him and to the work he has been called to do. The wife of a pastor is no ordinary role. It is not for the jealous, nor timid soul. So I take this moment without further ado to say we celebrate you. Through demand, though demands are never ending and recognition are few, your smiles are ever present, never stale, even each one is new. Your example to the sisters and encouragement to the brothers while obeying Christ's command that we serve one another. You're gloriously appreciated as an enhancer of life. You are not just a queen, you are our pastor's wife. We love you.
First Lady Beth. We just wanted to let you know today that we really do love you, but you make us kind of sick. Yeah. I mean, what can they not do? They do it all. They're great administrators. They're great pastors. They're leaders to leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, they can sing. They're good friends. They preach. Right. They play music. They know all the good places to eat and all the great places to go vacation. Yes. I mean, you're kind of awesome. And we really love that and thank God that you're, we're connected to you all. And uh, we just wanted to say happy Pastors Appreciation Day. And uh, thank God for your voice to this generation. It's so exciting to see the doors that God is opening for you all, not only in this nation, but the nations of the earth. And we thank you and we thank Bethel Family Worship Center for sharing you with all of the body of Christ. We just come today to say that we hope that this is an awesome day for you and thank you for being a voice to our generation.
otherworldly, heavenly. We do love you, and uh, we appreciate the, the wide path that you plowed so a lot of folks could go through, and then you've, you've made the well deep so we could drink of the presence of the Lord. We uh, have a little uh, idea of some of the sacrifice, but we appreciate your dedication and uh, your genuineness and uh, the love that you have for God, uh, for his people, and for us. Uh, we're excited about people coming into their, fulfilling their destiny because of uh, what you had in your hearts. And we thank you that you didn't quit when you could have, and you stayed with it as your faithfulness. So uh, we hope this is a, a great day of celebration. Hey, Pastor Russell, effectively, we want to say congratulations to you on this pastor appreciation. And uh, if I lived in Indianapolis, Indiana, I would attend Bethel Family Worship Center because of the pastors of that great church. We love you and consider you some of our dearest friends. We wanted to be in on this surprise. I hope you've been surprised today by all the celebrations. Honored to get to be a part of it. I don't know of two people that deserve it more. You guys are amazing pastors and you are awesome ministry friends. We're, we count it an honor to get to be uh, friends with you guys and do life together through ministry. And so we celebrate you today. We hope your day is full of wonderful surprises. Happy Pastor Appreciation Day. God bless you. No, this is Pastor Appreciation Day. We don't just appreciate it. We love you. God bless you. Hi, Pastor Russ and Pastor Bev. Um, you know me, Crystal. You have both been my shepherds for the last eight and a half years. And um, I just want to say thank you because uh, I'm pretty private and I've shared some things with you, but there's a lot you guys don't know that you can really help me through. Every message, email, encouragement that you guys have sent um, has really uh, helped change the course of my life as well as my children. So uh, I thank you for not giving up, really, because I know you guys have had a really challenging year this past year. And uh, a lot of us do not understand the rhythm ministry, even though you share it with us. We don't get it, not the total way. But I thank you for getting, not giving up through your own personal battles. Um, and for loving us and keeping us all covered in prayer, even while you're uh, de dealing with your own issues. So I just love you both, and I just thank you so much. And I want you to know I appreciate you for the bottom line.
Come on and put your hands together in this place. Come on and put your hands together if you've seen him do it. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for all the great performances today. Woo, my God, my God, my God. Put your hands together. Give God a praise. Come on and give God a praise if you are thankful for your pastors today. My God, my God. Ooh, my God. We, I know this is pastor appreciation, but we are having some church up in here today. Amen, amen. Well, today the leaders have a little something uh, that they want to say. Because he always says, it's not about us, it's about him. Our pastor is a hard-working man, dedicated to his call of God, standing steadfast in every trial and every test. I know what it's like to be a pastor. His work is never done. He works seven days a week. And he's on call 24 hours a day. He heals, though without pills or a knife. He is sometimes a lawyer, often a social worker, and an entertainer. He's a salesman. He's a decorative piece for public functions. And he's supposed to be a scholar. He visits the sick, marries people, dedicates their babies, preaches their funerals, and he labors to console those who's in sorrow, and he admonishes those who sin and tries to stay sweet when chatting for not doing his duty. He suffers the pain of false accusations. He plans programs, appoints committees when he can get, when he can get them. He spends considerable time keeping people out of each other's heart. And between times, he prepares sermons, preaches and teaches on Wednesdays and Sundays to those who don't happen to have any other engagement. Then on Monday, he smiles when some nodhead says, Preacher, you've got it made. All you have to do is preach on Wednesday and Sunday and get your paycheck. Then the pastor can respond and say, and my retirement is out of this world. I want to say to Pastor Helton and Sister Beth, thank you for being my pastor and loving me and my family and for allowing me in Maryland to be a part of this wonderful ministry of Bethel Family Worship Center. Well, what I'd like to say is everything you've already seen is exactly what I would have said. But I have to say something from my own heart. Pastor Bev is a special lady. You may think it's quite an easy task and just a pleasant life, but really it takes a lot of grace to be a pastor's wife. 
She's supposed to be perfect without a flaw in view, a saint when she's in the parsonage as well as in the pew. Her home must be a small hotel for folks that chance to roam and yet have peace and harmony in the perfect preacher's home. When air groups are called to meet, her presence must be there, and yet the members all agree she should be a woman of prayer. Though hearing people's burdens, their grief both night and day, she's supposed to spread but sunshine to those along the way. She must lend a sympathetic ear to every tale of woe and forget all about it, lest to others it might go. If you think it's quite an easy task and just a pleasant life, it really takes a lot of grace to be a preacher's wife. I've been here since 2005. Uh, Pastor Ben and, and Pastor Hilton have been my pastors and preachers. And I want to say I remember the first service I came to. I've gone to church almost all of my life, but I remember I never looked at my watch until it was all over, and I said, oh my, it's that late and it's all over. I was just thrilled, and I think that's one of the reasons I kept coming back, was I wasn't constantly looking at my watch. In fact, I stopped wearing a watch to church. But <laughs> I can only say how much I love and appreciate both of you and everything that you've done just for me. And I'm so glad that I found Bethel. You know, God has a way of leading us to the right place in our life. Uh, and for that, I'm grateful. And I'm grateful it was here. And thank you for being everything that you are and being real, real deal. Thank you. Okay, I have to do this real fast. He didn't want me to do this. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? You. We think it's you. Two, four, six, eight. Who is really great? You. We think it's you. We think you're fine. We think you're dandy. We think you're better than sugar candy. We think you're top notch. Yeah, 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 yeah. top what was before, we can't top that, so. <laughs> but uh, we consider it a, a privilege and an honor to uh, speak to you this morning uh, just on the, the uh, idea of administrator uh, aid. Um, and we do appreciate this opportunity, and we're going to say uh, The Amplified Version of, of uh, Matthew 25 and 21 says, His master said to him, Well done, you upright, honorable, admirable and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of much. Enter into and share the joy, the delight, the blessedness which your master enjoys. An administrator has the responsibility to establish the structure. Paul told Titus, the reason I left you in Crete was that you might put in order what was left unfinished. As an administrator, Titus was given the responsibility of appointing officers and establishing the structure of the church. This same responsibility has been placed upon our pastors. In looking up the Greek word for the spiritual gift of administration, we found the word hubernesis. This unique term refers to a shipmaster or a captain, a steersman or a helmsman, the one who handles the tiller. It literally, literally means to steer or to rule or govern. It carries the idea of someone who guides and directs a group of people toward a goal or destination. In essence, they provide the directions for the whole church. They seek to create a biblical structure that will keep the church on point with the mission and be obedient to God. As administrators, our pastors have walked hand in hand with each other as they have steered BFWC in the right direction. They have honored God with their faithfulness and obedience as they have continued to work towards the mission and vision 
that God has so graciously blessed them with. They have weathered and continue to weather the storms of ministry as they guide this ship through the rough terrains and the calm seas. They have created structure in the house and have allowed others to walk alongside them to reach the common goal that God has set before them. Because of their leadership and faithfulness, BFWC is maturing in Christ and reaching in love. We are bringing people to Jesus and membership in his family developing them to Christ-like maturity and equipping them for their ministry in the church and life mission in the world in order to magnify God's name. Pastor and Pastor Ben, we honor you today as you celebrate 19 years of service in this house. Your leadership, prayers, praise, hard work, dedication, planning, strategizing, and tweaking is a testament to your perseverance your faithfulness. The Bible says, well done, you upright, honorable, admirable, and faithful servant. We love and appreciate you so much. God bless you. Pastors, uh, after 17 years of being under your leadership when I thought about uh, when I thought about you I thought about uh, shepherd leadership and being shepherd leaders and they told me to prepare for three minutes and I prepared for 30 <laughs> But I want uh, everyone to know the characteristics of a shepherd leader. Because not everyone that is a, a shepherd nowadays is a leader. But this is taken out of John 10, John chapter 10. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. A shepherd leader enters the right way. He enters by the door with a divine commission, a divine authority, who comes not of himself, but is sent does not take the honor to himself or thrust it upon himself and assume an office to himself, but is called unto it, invested in it. He is the shepherd of the sheep. Verse three, to him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. The shepherd leader is an example. The shepherd goes ahead of the sheep, and the sheep follow him. It's not a case of do as I say, not as I do. He's a true leader that leads by example. John 10, 4. When he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. The shepherd leader is trustworthy. Sheep follow the good shepherd because they know his voice. And this is learned over time from the consistent and caring treatment of the sheep by the shepherd. He cultivates a deep sense of trust within those that he and she leads. His voice evokes the character and care of a shepherd leader. John 10 and 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. A shepherd leader, a shepherd leader provides provision. A shepherd provides good pasture. A sheep says, as in Psalm 23, I shall not be in want. 
He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. True leaders provide for the real needs of those they lead. 10, 10. The thief come not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The shepherd leader provides life. The leader acts, shepherd leader acts in a way that gives life to those that he and she leads. John 10 and 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. The shepherd leader is sacrificial. The good shepherd chooses personal sacrifice for the welfare of the sheep. They willingly experience personal sacrifice for the benefit of those that they lead. It's not about the leader. It's about those being led. John 10, 12 through 13. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not. See if the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and flee. And the wolf catches them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. The shepherd leader is invested. The shepherd leader has a personal stake in the well-being of the sheep. A hired hand will abandon them when the going gets tough or dangerous. For with him, it's only a job. The shepherd leader is invested in the sheep and sticks with them through thick and thin. So it is true with the shepherd leaders. They are personally invested in those they lead. John 10, 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. The shepherd leader is relational. True shepherd leaders take the time and energy to build solid and genuine relationships with those that they lead. Those led are not viewed as mere employees or servants or objects. Each is known and treated as an image of the living God. John 10, 16. And other sheep I had, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. The shepherd leader is a visionary. As Jesus had a vision of the future and lived for the fulfillment of that vision, so it is with the shepherd leader. True shepherd leaders have a clear vision for the future and they live toward it. Today I want to thank you for being my shepherd leader. God bless you pastors. Love you. And I want to apologize in advance. one piece of paper. So, um, so as Wayne mentioned, we've been here for over 17 years, and I thought about um, your role as a teacher, and how uh, over 17 years, you would have taught us a lot of things, and I, when a teacher teaches, they hope people learn things, right? So I thought about, first, the definition of a teacher is a person who helps others to acquire knowledge, competency, and values. And I thought over the past 17 years, you've taught us a lot, a lot of lessons. And the one thing that stood out for me was the way that you, you live the life that you teach about, and you teach by example. And so I thought, interesting, we didn't, Wayne didn't share what he was going to say, because if I had known, I would have taken some of those notes. Just give but he talked about you being a shepherd leader, I'm going to talk about you being a servant leader, and how you have taught us by example. So I went to a book that I had from a training years ago. Uh, it was by Dr. Keith Kent, The Case for Servant Leadership. And he talked about the characteristics of a servant leader and two things that stood out. And the servant leader focuses primarily on the growth and well-being of people. 
and I know that's you. And then the other thing that stood out, it said a servant leader shares power, um, but puts the needs of others first and helps people develop and perform as highly as possible. And I know that's you. And so I'm gonna leave you with um, the paradoxical commandments by Dr. Keith Kent. People are illogical, unreasonable, and self-centered. Love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Do good anyway. If you are successful, you will win false friends and true enemies. Succeed anyway. The good you do today will be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness makes you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. The biggest men and women with the biggest ideas can be shot down by the smallest men and women with the smallest minds. Think big anyway. People favor underdogs, but follow only top dogs. Fight for a few underdogs anyway. What you spend years building may be destroyed overnight. Build anyway. People really need help, but may attack you if you do help them. Help people anyway. Give the world the best you have and you'll get kicked in the teeth. Give the world the best you have anyway. And Sister Beth, I'm gonna finish the song. Give them reason to do it with joy and not with sorrow. 
You ought to want your pastor's work to be a joyful work and not a stop for hard work. Pastor, we appreciate you. Even though we don't always seem to relay that information to you in words and, and, and everything, but in our deeds, we try to do what is best, not just for the individual. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna end like this, and I know it's gonna sound crazy because I'm a tricky fan, but Dr. Spock used to say, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one. He's here to look out for the many because we are family, we are a unit, we are an organism. And sometimes the cells have to suffer in order for the body to grow. Amen? Amen. So God, we bless you, we praise you. Your work is not in vain. And it says in the in book of Timothy that the elders who work hard are worthy of double honor. We honor you doubly today. God bless you. Wow, I feel so underprepared. I mean, I didn't prepare a song or a poem. I don't even have a Star Trek quote, so I don't. <laughs> that, was, that was great. Um, we are so thankful for our pastors. Uh, to us, they're not only our pastors, but they're our parents, um, my employers. Uh, they wear so many hats in my life. <laughs> can be intimidating sometimes. We're so thankful for them. And, every area of life that we're connected in. And uh, today we want to share with you R, which is for Restore. And I believe this is one of the most important things that our pastors do for the kingdom. In Galatians 6 and 1, it says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. And I believe that this isn't only the call of their life, but this is the verse that they live out each and every day. And it's part of who they are. It says, those who live by the Spirit should restore those who have been caught away. And it's because of our pastors and the way that they live their life that they're able to reach out to the lost and their hurting and help restore them back to God and also back to each other. I, they probably can't even count all of the marriages that have been restored under their leadership all of the relationships between parents and their children, all of the people who have been brought back into the kingdom and rescued because they chose to live according to God's word and be the example that they are to us today. So we are thankful that you guys are restorers. And I know that without a doubt, if there was any time in, in any of our lives where we got caught up in something we shouldn't have been caught up in, if maybe we made a mistake, maybe we drifted away, I know that it doesn't matter where we would find ourselves in this life, that you would be there with arms wide open, with an open door, uh, willing and waiting to lead us back to where we should be. So we thank, for, we thank you for being our restorers. So Ethan said... You know, you're our parents, but you were my parents first, so, um, just kidding, it's okay. But I do want to say, um, just kind of speaking from another viewpoint, you are my pastors, and I honor you today, and I love you always, and I'm so grateful that most of all, you're my parents, and I've lived with them, I lived with them for 25 years, so I know them really well, and, um, it's just, it's a, an amazing thing to now be um, 26, almost 30. It's kind of crazy, but I know it's not old, I know. But, you know, being at this point in my life now and looking back and seeing all of the moments that they covered people and never, you know, no matter what was going on with them personally, they didn't let me be exposed to that be exposed to the hurt. And I just wanna thank you for that, for that example um, of how I should live my life. <laughs> and I know I'm not always good at that either, but just, I thank you for covering people. And I've seen you many times, just people who maybe treated you unfairly, who weren't right in what they did. And instead of talking about them, instead of letting that get you down, You've covered people, you cover them with grace, 
And I thank you for that. That restoration is what you stand on and that's value in your life. And that's something that I value and just am so amazed by when I think of you. And I love you. And we just thank you for all that you do for us here at Bethel. And I know that everything that has been said today, I know that everyone can relate to that in some aspect of their lives. So we thank you for covering us, for extending grace to us, for leading us well and loving us well. And we honor you today. Amen. At this time, we would like to ask our pastors to come join us for a moment. First of all, we give you thanks and praise that we bless your name. We give you glory, and Lord, we magnify you. And Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for being faithful to us, God, and we thank you for extending your grace to us, God, by sending us pastors after your own heart. We thank you, Lord, for their leadership. We thank you, Lord, for their guidance, Lord. We thank you for the love of God that is expressed through them towards us, Lord. We can't thank you enough for who they've been to us in our lives. And so, Father, right now, God, we lift them up to you. As they have lifted us up, we now, in turn, lift them up to you, God. And Lord, we pray over them, Lord God. And Lord, we pray, God, Lord, that you will continue to grace them with your presence. That you will continue to grace them, Lord God, with the ministry that you have equipped them with. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we lift them up, Lord God. And we set a hedge of protection around our pastors today, God. Lord, we set a hedge of protection around them, Lord God, that cannot fail. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray, God, uh, Lord, as they pour out the vision of the Lord, Lord God, we pray that you would send laborers, Lord. Lord, you would send laborers into the harvest, God, to work in the vision, Father. We pray, Lord God, that you will send those that will come and lift up their hands, Lord, and do the work of the ministry. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in Jesus' name, we come against, Lord, any spirit of rebellion, any spirit of disobedience, Lord, any spirit, Lord God, of dissonance, Lord, of division in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we pray, God, that you will move in, Lord God, and Lord, that your people will have a spirit of obedience, and Lord, and a spirit of uh, submission, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that the wind of the Spirit would undergird and lift up our pastors right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray that before them, Lord God, every valley will be a base, Lord God, and every mountain will be, a, Lord God, a base, and every valley will be exalted in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will send for supernatural wisdom, Lord God, supernatural guidance, Lord God, supernatural counsel, Lord, Lord, for hard situations, Lord God, Lord, for stubborn problems in the name of Jesus. 
We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that every stubborn wall will come down in Jesus' name. Every hindrance that keeps them from moving forward in the kingdom of God that will come against them, we command it to go in the name of Jesus. We pray that they will have a free flow in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that they will move forward, God, in advance in the kingdom of God. Lord, we pray that you will give them supernatural favor, Lord God. That you will give them favor in the marketplace, God. God, that you will give them favor, Lord God, with government officials. That you will give them favor, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing for them and through them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, that you are using them, Lord, Lord, to break down racial barriers, to break down denominational barriers. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God, that every barrier before them is broken. In Jesus' name. And Father, we lift you up and we give you praise. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare the blood of Jesus over them, Lord. Lord, let the peace of God saturate their minds. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the peace of God saturate them. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray healing over their bodies. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now, God, in Jesus' name, that any issue, Lord God, any infirmity that will come against them, we cast it down in the name of Jesus, and we lose healing towards them. In Jesus' name. And Father, we declare health over their spirit, soul, and body. We declare right now in the name of Jesus. We declare right now healing over broken hearts. In the name of Jesus. Lord, healing from words, Lord God, of people that have come against them in the name of Jesus. We take authority right now over gossiping spirits. We take authority right now over slanderers. We take authority right now in the name of Jesus. We take authority right now over lying spirits. And God, in the name of Jesus, we gird them with truth right now. Let truth be a buckler. Let truth be their strength. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise and thanks, Lord God. We pray that the word of God will have free course in Jesus' name. That the word of God will go forth unhindered. Hallelujah. Lord, that they will have a fresh word, a word in season to them that are weary. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift you up and give you praise in Jesus' name. We pray, God, that you will send forth, Lord, through them a revival, God. Lord, a revival in this house, Lord God. A revival of holiness. A revival of righteousness. Lord, a revival, God. Lord, that will go out, God, from this place, Lord. And a revival, Lord, that will move into our neighborhoods and our communities. Lord, a revival, God, that will grab hold in our city and in our state, Lord God. A revival, Lord God, that will spend the country in the name of Jesus. From this place, God, we pray, Lord God, that your spirit will come down. Let your spirit will move by your power and by your strength, oh God. From this place, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we declare right now, Lord God. Lord, we declare the anointing of God. From this place, will destroy yokes. The anointing of God will break burdens in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we give you praise, Lord God, for our pastors. And we thank you, Lord God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for those, Lord God, the sheep of this place, Lord God, that put themselves under the shepherd. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that in this place we have found good pastor. Lord, we thank you that from this place, God, that we have received the bread of God, that we are receiving the water of the Lord. Lord, we're being refreshed by your spirit in this place, God. And Lord, we thank you right now. Now, Father, breathe upon our pastors right now. Breathe the freshness upon them. Send the refreshings from the Spirit of the Lord right now, God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now 
Lord, baptize them again in the Holy Ghost and fire. Lord, in Jesus' name, oh, we thank you right now. And we give you praise, God. Lord, we put a hand of protection around them, God. We guard them right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray that they sense the love of God from their sheep right now in Jesus' name. That the love of God that we have for them will uplift them, will encourage them, will strengthen them. And Father, we give you thanks and praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor for our pastors. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and clap your hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. And we give you praise. I know our pastor, he's all weepified, but he has something. I know he has something he'd like to say. Thank you so much. You may be seated. God bless you. Pastor Beverly and I, I don't have a speech, um, but I do want to give honor to the Lord. And I'm going to ask my wife if she would just speak first. And then at the end, we'll speak together. Why do I have to speak first? <laughs> I wanted to see what he said so I could come behind him. Yeah. No. We appreciate your kindness. Um, if I'm being very transparent, sometimes these services are very uncomfortable for me. Um, but we are so grateful. And thank you for taking time to, to show honor and to show love. And everything that was said about us, we could say the same about all of you. And we want you to all know that whether you are on pastoral staff, whether you're a ministry coordinator, whether you're a volunteer, whether you're new, you could have been here, maybe Wednesday night was your first night. You are important to us and you matter and we see you for you and you have great purpose on your life and we're just honored to run alongside you and uh, to be part of your lives. We love you. We appreciate you. Uh, 19 years is a long time. And I wish I could say it's all been a joy. This has been the joy. It's not a job, it's a joy. I will tell you it is a joy, but there are times it has been a job. I could give you a couple years that it was a job. <laughs> Take you back to 19, not no. But <laughs> it is a joy as well. And honestly, I know in our hearts that nobody could be a pastor. We're not foolish enough to think that it's because of us. You couldn't do it with God, out God's enablement. And also, I believe a specific calling upon your life, a, a grace to do that. And I'm thankful, although they're not here, I want to give honor to our spiritual parents as well and our natural parents. I was thinking as we were sitting here, I remember my mom and dad being honored when they served in the pastorate and I didn't even growing up in it I, I knew that it was nice and I always enjoyed it because I knew we were gonna have a dinner afterwards but I didn't know the full weight of what they carried but looking back being in the ministry I always knew that I would serve God and I knew I had a real hunger for him and a personal relationship with him but ministry was honestly not part of my plans I had grown up in it I'd seen the good, I'd seen also the bad, and I loved the Lord, but I just wanted to serve somewhere and get up under somebody's hands and just lift their hands and help them. That's always what I thought would be our lot in life. That was my plan. But looking back, I can't even remember, I don't even know why this came to me, but when we were sitting here doing certain things, I had a vivid memory come back. I remember when I was, I believe I was 13 or 14, and my parents had served on staff in a church for many, many years. And then with the blessing of their pastors, they went out to launch a, a, a work from scratch, is what my dad called it. And I remember that for a season, we rented the community, the town hall in our little community of Canal Fulton, Ohio, which is like a little speck on the map. But I remember every Saturday night, my dad would have to go to the, to the town hall 
and we would have to set up chairs to make sure it was already on Saturday night for Sunday. And I remember even being 13 and 14, even though I didn't want perhaps this calling, I know that the calling was there because I remember even in the midst of being a teenager thinking, oh, in a couple more hours, me and dad have to go set up those chairs. And realistically, I didn't need to be there, but I wanted to be there. I remember when he started pastoring, we finally got a building. We had our own little building of our own. And I remember we used to have one of those boards. Some of you that haven't been raised in church, you won't have any clue what I'm talking about, but maybe you could Google it. But there was a little brown board that would sit in the corner and you would slide the numbers of how many were here today and how many were. And I remember the number, it seemed like for weeks and weeks we had 32 people. So I would watch the little person that took up the opportunity, they would go back and they'd put that 32, 32. And I remember thinking, wow, we had 32 people this morning. And as a teenager, I was so encouraged by that. I remember sometimes it would go down and I would sit there and I would look around and I'd think, well, where's this family? And where are they at? And we would get in the car and I would ask my dad, did you hear from so-and-so? Where are they at today? Not even realizing that's the call of God right there, already preparing. And I don't say that to boast of myself, but I say that because some of you carry that same calling upon you. And whether you do it somewhere else or whether you join together, I believe there's also synergy. When we all join together, people with like-minded, with the same callings, we can do great things when we work together and we put our giftings and our callings together. And we just love you. We appreciate you. I don't even know what else could be said. I'm like, we had the O-H-I-O. That was got me off good. And for all of you Purdue fans, I don't want to hear anything about it. Today is Pastor Appreciation, so don't even go there. Don't even go there. We're not talking about that today. Those that don't know, just leave it there. Then we went into the song. What was that song? I Never Lost My Praise. So wonderful. And then a special by Lisa Hubbard. I mean, I don't even know. You've just done it over the top. But we just thank you. We love you. And we appreciate you. Pastor Bev, what a privilege it is to serve you in ministry and to serve in pastoral ministry. I was thinking of the Apostle Paul who said that he counted it a joy that God saw fit to place him in ministry. And if we're not careful, sometimes we complain about the things that we prayed for. We ask God for an opportunity to serve, and then we begin to serve. We felt tired and wore out and felt like we were being used. And yet that's exactly what we asked God for in those early years. God, would you use me somehow? J.R. Dalton mentioned sitting in the kitchen floor in my parents' home every time we would have a guest speaker because we were a church that had no money, but we have the power of God. Uh, they would come after church and sit at our kitchen table and some of the folks would make dishes and bring them over. And we would eat food and there was not enough room for all the children, my sister and I, and some of the people who had, that we would bring that had children, and we would sit on the floor and look up and listen to the stories of the pastors and the evangelists and the prophets and the apostles that came through our little house in Akron, Ohio. And they shared the miraculous power of God as something would leap in my spirit sitting there on a kitchen floor that had carpet in it. I don't recommend putting carpet in your kitchen. <laughs> but when you poke, <laughs> come on somebody. <laughs> we had carpet. Oh, anyhow, that's another story. But I remember sitting on that carpet in the kitchen, looking and listening intently, and tears swelled in my eyes and my spirit would leap as I would hear the stories. And many of you have this, the same stories of Pastor Hill standing on this platform, a spiritual father in our life who could take us back to the 50s and the 60s and talk about the power of God. Prophet Winberg, who could, stories that Wesley could tell, Juanita could tell, forefathers, Greg and Donna, who could tell of their pastoral experience and their forefathers, the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, everyone standing on this platform, those of you, it is an honor uh, to serve with you and to bring the collection 
and the synergy of all of our life shared experiences together that we might see something happen tangible as we approach the coming of Jesus. And he is soon to come. Having just arrived back from Brazil on Friday night, Beverly and I were honored to serve there and minister to pastors from around the entire country in the nation of Brazil. It was quite an amazing experience. But the same spirit that was there is here. The same Jesus there is here. A kindred spirit. And you know when you're in the presence of God. Because when you're in the presence of God, denomination does not matter. When you're in the presence of God, color of your skin does not matter. When you are in the presence of God, there is a knowing inside of me that I am in his presence. And in the presence of God, there is life, there is peace, and there is joy forevermore. What an honor to do life together with you. Thank you for bearing us. Thank you for loving us unconditionally. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being fruitful. The last 19 years have been such a journey, and it almost feels like you just barely scratched the surface to see what God's going to do. We are in a different day of when my mom and dad pastored and Bev's parents pastored. We're in a different time when Pastor Hill led congregations, many of you. We're in a different day in the year of 2018, a different culture, a different mindset. People come, they go quickly. Our attention span, thanks to Facebook and social media, we are, we are, we have 30 seconds to give you something before you move to the next channel. Some of you haven't made it through this entire service without staying on Facebook. I'm not putting anyone down. I'm telling you about the hour we're in. It is a different day. While we were in Brazil this past week, we were honored. I saw so much honor. I knew we were coming home to a service like this, and it is uncomfortable to have people brag on you like that. It's appreciated, but it's uncomfortable. But I saw honor. Beverly and I saw so much honor the way that they honored us. We were in the city of Lagoa Santa, which is the very first place that the missionaries from the United States came to the country of Brazil and gave the gospel. Four couples were sent from the United States to the, the nation of Brazil to preach the gospel. Those four couples gave their life on the mission field, lived and died on the mission field in Brazil, left the comforts of their homes, the comforts of their families. They sold it all and walked away from it all and went to a nation they were not born in to preach the gospel. They honored us as a representation because we were in the very city that the first message was preached from those who had come from the U.S. You imagine how exciting it was to be in that atmosphere. But they told about a man and a woman who left all of the comforts of the United States and went to live in the Amazon and took a canoe down the Amazon River to visit and minister to the indigenous people. And there they began to preach the gospel. They began to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. They cast out devils. They preached Jesus. Entire villages were won to Christ. Churches were established that are still standing today and are growing large because of people who gave their life. <laughs> Pastor Montefusco, who is the general visit, the president, the bishop of the country, Brazil, said to us as he was being translated for Portuguese so we could hear him, he said that these couples who gave their life, we owe a great debt. And so we give honor to you as Americans, U.S. citizens coming to preach again here. He said, but these couples that came those many years ago that brought us the gospel, he said, the reason we have churches today is because of their sacrifice. He said they were in a village in the Amazon and several villages had come together who had received Christ and their entire villages 
one, were one to Jesus. Hundreds of people at a time heard the gospel for the very first time and came to Christ. He said we were in, they were in a meeting there and the mosquitoes were so bad, they were in the Amazon jungle that the mosquitoes were so bad that they swarmed your body and if you opened your mouth, they would fill your mouth. He said there was nothing anyone could do, but they began to pray. And they prayed and God sent a strong wind into the middle of their village and moved the mosquitoes out for over six months. He said we had no electricity, we had no PA system, but we had the power of God in our midst. And something leaped up in my spirit and said, my God, we need the power of God in our church again. I don't want just a glimpse. I want the power. I want the endowment. I want the radiant glory of heaven to shine down upon this house. And all your accolades and all of your appreciations are so much appreciated. But if we, we don't have the power, if we don't have the power to help you succeed so that you would leave a, a legacy and your posterity would be extended to many generations as we usher in the coming of the Lord, then what do we have more than just a club? We are not a club. We are not a social gathering. We are not a seeker-sensitive church hoping not to offend anyone. We are here to preach the truth of God's word, to cry aloud and to spare not. I still believe that Jesus is the son of the living God. I believe that he died. He was put on a cross. He went into a grave. And three days later, he got up out of that grave. And he is coming soon. I still believe in the power of the Holy Ghost that will change your life. And I feel like preaching this morning. What a joy it is to serve with you. I believe that even this past week as we had time to reflect in the last couple days of our trip was just isolation for us. And I want to tell you something, I don't make any excuse for sitting on a beach under a palm tree and watching the waves roll in. And I thought it must be getting close to the season because already people are posting, oh, I think I'm going to have to find me another place to live. It's cold in Indiana. I'm thinking, get over it. Get you a coat and a scarf and keep going, brother. You wouldn't be happy there either. Be too much, too hot for you. Then we'd have to come and do a deliverance and get you saved again. Come on, somebody, have fun with me this morning. And I thought to be in the season we're in, to see so many young people come to Christ, sixteen people baptized in the Holy Ghost this past Wednesday night, right here. I walked up last night before we went to dinner with our Marriage on the Rock class and saw that they had installed while we were gone, I didn't know nothing about it, a playground for our little children right here. We're doing life together and we're, we're coming together in unity and it just brings great joy. I want to say thank you. Thank you for every pastor, deacon, elder, leader, every volunteer. There are so many people on this boat. It takes a lot of people to keep the, in, the engine running. Amen. I, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you for the witness that we have in this community. So many people call us, email us, connect with us, that hear what God is doing in Bethel Family Worship Center. And I want you to know we, together, are making him famous around this world. Together. So thank you. And much appreciation to you. I know Pastor Bev and I had in our heart that we wanted to share something special. Well, when we heard that um, you were planning, the leadership was planning pastor appreciation, the first thing I said to pastor was, 
I wish we could give prance every one, a single one of you in here, up here, and say something good about you. Like everybody say one word about them, because that's what we feel in our heart. But we also are very thankful for the team, all of this team here, every ministry coordinator, anybody that attends here, we're just thankful for you. But we wanted to make sure as well from our hearts that we honor the others that are part of our pastoral team, because this surely isn't just about us. Um, it takes many people that keep, just like when we were in Brazil, everything just kept going right on as normal, and we honor our pastoral staff. So from our hearts, we have a, a card for each of them and a monetary gift from us and from you. I know a lot of you, that's in your heart as well to honor all of them. I want you to know that they are being honored and we appreciate them. So we want you now to give it up for pastors Leroy and Marilyn Hill, our care pastors. Pastors Wayne and Lisa Hubbard, our outreach pastors. And pastors Ethan and Caitlin Coffin, our student pastors. We appreciate each of them and, and them serving in their respective areas. You may be seated, God bless you. I know that these folks here we haven't forgot our deaconry either. Forgive us for not having those with us. But we want to say we appreciate all of you. Now, I don't know what, the, I'm gonna turn the mic over because I can talk. But I believe they told me, or I saw coming in that they are catering a meal today. And that costs hundreds of dollars. So for those of you that have already said, I'm gonna be going somewhere else, do not dishonor us by leaving. Stay with us. Look at your neighbor and say, Lucille, he's talking to you. Look at your other neighbor and say, they spent money on me. So I can't leave. I'm going to eat and I'm going to fellowship. For those of you that are concerned about health, it's been catered in and we have hand sanitizer for you. So please don't make an excuse of why you had to go. God bless you. We love you. I'll turn it back to these wonderful folks in here. Love you, Pastor. Love you. Amen. The month of October is Pastor Appreciation all over the all over the country, all our churches. And I'm thankful tonight or today for our pastors. I love them deeply. Amen. We're getting ready to receive a, a love offering today. All of our offering today is going to our pastors. You know, one thing I know about our pastor, I, ever since I've known him, I've never known him to ask for a dime for him or his family. Ain't that wonderful? And that's the way it should be. We should be, uh, love them enough that they never have to come I mean, and say amen. Amen. So as we receive our offering today, I know you came prepared to give a good, loving offering today to our pastors. We only do this once a year, and I know you came prepared to do so. And so, in your tithe, you can put your tithes in the offering, you know, or we have different ways that you can give, but, you know, leave your tithes because that's going to pay our gas bill. Okay? <laughs> Amen. So get prepared to give. All right, our ushers are going to come and we're believing together. Father, we thank you today for a special time that's been set aside that we may honor our pastors. Thank you, God, today, Lord, that you have blessed us so as a congregation. We thank you, God, today that you have provided for us in every need and everything that we have need of in our life. Lord, we pray now that you'll bless our gifts. Lord, for we lift, lift them up to you, wanting to bless our pastors and encourage them, Lord. And, and just show, not only, Lord, by word, or by tongue, but God, that we love them indeed. We ask for your blessing in Jesus' name. And everybody said, God bless you. Let me give you some instructions. 
We get ready to eat today. We're to line up down the hallway. Am I right? Well, instead of running down there, we'll just line up, all right? Are we going to, we're going to send the elders down there first, the older folks? We'll, we'll send you all down there. Um, I, I believe that um, I believe that they have the food already at the table, so you just go in there and sit down at a table, and the food will be ready for you. So you actually you won't even have to really line up. There'll be a dessert table for you to grab something. If there's no dessert, that's because you didn't bring it. Uh, <laughs> did you know that? <laughs> So, um, yes, uh, we're going to let the elderly people line up first um, and go ahead and head out into the gym. As soon as you give, you can feel free to get up and start heading that way. And uh, just a moment, um, Pastor Hill's going to bless the food. And after he blessed the food, feel free to head down, down to the gym. Okay, thank you. Father, we thank you for the food that's been prepared for us. We pray, God, that it will be nourishment to our bodies. Bless our time and fellowship together with our pastors today, and we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. And everybody said, God bless you.